When you turn on your radio, by the time your ear gets to hear your favourite song and glorious left and right stereo, you're mindlessly enjoying the end result of a huge journey that involves the tiniest of sounds and the hugest of egos. You see, musicians have to first work to capture these painstakingly honed individual sounds. Melodies. Beats. And only then can they attempt to mix them perfectly together to create the one community of stereo sound that modern humans call a song. I'm a child of culture clash. One two I'm Estia. Is that your real name? Yes, named after my grandmother in Cameroon. Estia is a Wellington-based singer, songwriter and beatmaker who performs with her trusty sidekick, Lola. I make the beats with my MPC, my music production centre, Lola, and she's like... A woman. Yep, like a womanly MPC. Yeah, it's like a, it's a thing that can sample anything, mess with it and spit it back out. Yeah, exactly. So it can be used pretty much as a band, except it's electronic. Since I bought Lola, we've added more band members, but Lola has been the founding band member of my machine band, which now currently is up to five. Wow. Five band members. Really? Yep. (laughs) And you're the only human? I'm the only human. (laughs) She's become a staple on student radio playlists throughout New Zealand, and when it comes to the creative process, Estia, well, she doesn't play well with others. Well, it's not that I didn't want to be with other people I bet because I'm quite bossy and like I'm very very particular about what I like and I just wanted to pretty much have complete creative control I don't know whether it's better or worse it's just how I like to do it Mm -hmm. yeah released 2012 as a single via SoundCloud online Culture Clash was the very first track that Astia produced and recorded Culture Clash is about my parents and how their cultures are very different. Well, I grew up with my mum, didn't grow up with my dad. He lives in France and he's originally from Cameroon in West Africa um, and my mum's from New Zealand. And New Zealand just generally, I think, has got quite a reputation of being like quite liberal and strong in the feminist component, whereas Cameroon, it's kind of a different buzz. It's exploring why it is that it might be difficult sometimes for me to, let's say, go over to my dad and accept what it is that he's got to say when I've grown up with my mother, who's Mm -hmm. not really on that same buzz. At all. But what is it about Culture Clash that helped Estia burst onto the New Zealand music landscape? How did she make sounds like these? And this one. And how did her days of impersonating Britney Spears as a child shape her vocal style to be what we hear today? To get the answers to our questions, we gave Astia a large pot of tea and got her around a mixing desk to show us the anatomy of Culture Clash and what it is that makes this song so special. Okay, the first thing that I started with was the synth. This is the first song that I ever produced and it was when I was in Germany it was before I'd even met Lola and that synth was purely like a logic plug-in that mm-hmm. synth something out of the box something out yeah. of the box completely I tried other stuff I went into a studio and they had all these flash synths and they're like would you try replacing that synth because but there is a sort of a um, social leprosy around using yeah. stuff out of the box right yeah so yeah. you have to build something totally unique yeah and there's a culture around sampling in general that I'm just not um like in the know about because I can't really hear the differences. <laughs> like, and I don't really care. There's not a lot to that as a starting point. I mean, there's no. two notes. <laughs> um, but it was just you messing around. <laughs> just you messing around. Yeah. And you're like, this, this is good. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah. Oof, this is that. It was just me, pl- I was just playing around, literally. <laughs> The, the next part was the bells. I wondered what that was. Are those bells? Yeah, it's like a bell plug-in. 
What do you think this bell thing does? What does it add to the song? It brings the birds in, you know, like it, it just, it opens up the sky. So the next came the drums. This is like a pretty simple drum pattern. In fact, it's probably one of the most straightforward drum patterns that I use in my songs because I like staggered or layered beats. Mm -hmm. But this one just fitted with this song and it's comprised of samples that I had gotten from a friend from a sample bank. The kick was combined with me going like this uh, uh, against my chest so I just like bit my chest and also made like a uh, sound. So you actually made some components of this sound? Yeah. Tell me that again. So it's just me like beating against my chest and going like uh, uh. That adds bottom to the, the already existing kick drum. I mean it clearly isn't supposed to sound like real drums because it's they're backwards. So yeah so there's a reverse snare in the drum beat as well. So there's the kick, there's the do, 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 the snare, and then that is a reverse snare, just kind of like adding a percussive layer. Sounds like someone's sucking on lemons. Yeah. I think the reverse snare adds ear into it, like bringing that electronic air into the song, making it kind of slidey and slippery. So the piano was originally recorded on a, a Logic plugin, but that couldn't stay because, you know, it was trying to be something that it wasn't and failing. So this is like a Nord. The really common version, it's the red piano, but it's a really nice sounding keyboard. Mm-hmm. I think that I added reverb to that, and that just kind of brings it along the same veins as the synthesizer, mm-hmm. just to kind of give it that quite eerie, spacey atmosphere. So you're obviously really comfortable with stuff being pretty stripped back. Like, there's plenty of space within the tune, right? I'm comfortable with minimalism. I don't really like clutter when I listen to things, and so maybe that's why I I keep things pretty minimal. What the heck's this about? This is where you hear Lola doing her thing, so she's taking up the sample of the piano to a higher note through her 16 level sampling And it's not supposed to sound right, is it? No. I mean, it's just supposed to sound how it sounds. Next is the BVs. When I was kind of going along the journey of doing the song, I was just like, oh yeah. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, and so I put those in, and I really like adding harmonies like that, like quite staccato, almost reminiscent of like African embellishments that they have in songs. This section feels like more using your voice as an instrument and more using it as something almost artificial. Like that sounds almost artificial, doesn't it? This is 16 level that you can hear clearly. Like what happened with the keyboard? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty weird uh, sampling yourself and spinning it out back at a totally unnatural pitch. No, I love it. I wouldn't call it weird, I'd call it fun. Oh, yeah, okay. (laughs) Oh, okay. What's this? So that's a reversed symbol. That's just to kind of bridge the gap between chorus and verse. Tell us how that works. It's almost like a, if you imagine it going through a funnel, like mm. you've got the chorus, which is the top of the funnel, and you're pouring the milk into a milk bottle. Mm. And so you've got the milk going through the top of the funnel, and then it's going through the bottom into the milk bottle. But you needed something to kind of ease the process. You needed a funnel. I needed a funnel, so that reverse mm. symbol works as a mm. funnel. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. I'll take that analogy. <laughs> cool. Well, let's hear your vocal, though. I'm a child of culture clash. One hole, 
do it. So you've gone into a giant bathroom. <laughs> That's the one. The bottom of, of an old Roman ruin. Exhale. I wound up down on the ground. Sweet benefit, dust and mouth. What are you going for with your with your vocal takes? Are you someone that is pedantic? You have to do them over and over again? Or? Yeah, I'm pedantic with my vocals. Do you have anyone who's there telling you, do it again? Was it just you? No. Everyone, everyone's telling me, oh, you don't need to do that again. It's fine. You got it like two, two, three takes ago, and I'm like, nah, I didn't. I am a child of culture, clash, culture, clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're down in the deep, smoky sounds. With your voice, has that always been where you've been singing? Well, it's a mixture because I think my voice is just naturally, that's just how it sounds. Mm. And then when I get higher, I get a little bit squeakier. <laughs> so you've so you got the kind of smoky down low and the squeak up top. <laughs> yeah. I used to have to do a really good Britney Spears imitation when I was about nine. And just like listening to country singers and stuff, singing that style, like you can kind of affect your voice in, in many different ways. What might Britney Spears sound like? Oh, I can't do it anymore. It was when I was nine because I had the same. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? I do see you do have that ability to do the squeak and the smoke at the same time. Yeah. Let's forget it's a great gift. (laughs) Squeak and smoke. smoke. That's a great description for my voice. I'm always trying to her squeaky, smoky voice. Doesn't sound good. (laughs) We've got to probably come up with something other than squeak. (laughs) We never talked about the bass. Oh my gosh! How can we? The most important bass? part of any electronic. Yeah, the bass would have come after the drums, actually. Mm. Oh. What is this thing? It's a double bass, but it's high. A double bass, and it's high, and it's from Logic. I think I liked it because it was really clear. Yeah. It's just like a really clear bass sound. So in terms of like your philosophy of how you do stuff, mm. one part of you is a hack, mm. right, where you say, I don't understand how all this stuff works. Mm. And another part of you is a dictator mm. saying, screw you, mm. I'll tell you how the thing is. Mm. And then there's this other part that somehow straddles the line <laughs> between can you get away with a bass sound like that? And it's like, well, obviously you can. Yeah. Well, there's nothing you can't really get away with. There are some things out there you can't get away with. I suppose. But, like, whatever sounds good holistically to me is good. It's a personal taste thing as well. It depends how you listen to music and how you deconstruct it. Some people won't be listening as to whether the bass sound is analogue or digital. And then other people who have more experience and think about that more will probably... Be more dissecting of it, they will be and now. I, yeah, exactly. And it's interesting because when I was producing this song, for example, I wasn't as ana- analytical as I am now. Mm. But even still, like I'm completely happy with the mixture mm. of the digital and the analog because um, it just kind of felt right and sounds right still to me. So after spending all this time creating and capturing these individual bits, what does Astia think she's achieved when all these parts work together? Well, for me, when I hear Culture Clash, it's quite visual. Like, I literally see, like, a world spinning in kind of like a navy blue universe without stars. What do you hope people will feel? Calmed, to some degree. And it sounds a bit corny, but I would say at peace. (laughs) And, like, not just with themselves, but with the actual song. Like, you trust the song. Some songs you don't actually trust. No, that's true. Some songs are like, where's this going? You're like, yeah, I'm not being looked after here. <laughs> the, song, the song, you feel yeah. like you can trust it from the beginning. That's good. That's, that's what really you wanted. Good. Yeah. That's so awesome. it worked. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Trustworthy. And a big thanks to Astia. Anatomy of a Song is a radio adventure crafted by RDU, funded by New Zealand On Air, and produced by Rachel Morton, Johnny Pipe, and me, Spanky Moore. Thank you for listening.